Okay, so that was the case when you have parents and the child. Now, what about node and its non-parents? So let's look at those examples, right? Uh, so is L independent of S? Is L independent of S? Louder, louder, but correct answer. So that's the illusion, right? It looks like L is not L is independent of S, right? It's not dependent on S. Can you argue that it is actually dependent on S? S tells you something about the intelligence, which in turn tells you something about the grade, which in turn tells you something about L, right? So in general, right, uh, you would expect this that if I told you that the SAT score was high, then the, then the probability of getting a good recommendation letter would be higher than the case when I told you that the SAT score was low. And this is exactly because of the reasoning which I said that because SAT score tells you something about intelligence which in turn all the way propagates back to the recommendation. And similarly, we can argue that L is not independent of D and L is also not independent of I, right? Knowing the intelligence tells you something about the grade and hence about the letter and so on. Now, where am I headed with this? I really want L and S to be independent given G. What if I know the value of G? Why are they independent now? Because whatever S could have probably told me about the grade, which actually matters for deciding the recommendation. So S would have okay gone and whispered something to this guy and then come and whispered something to this guy. But then I would this guy would say I already know this, right? I mean so there's no new information that you are actually adding, right? So that's why it doesn't matter. Once you know the grade, everything else can be blocked out. Right? This is fine. Can you argue that L is independent of I given the grade? But well, the grade depends on I. Whatever the grade I can whatever I can tell you about the grade, the grade has already told you that. Right? So it doesn't matter whatever extra information I has. And the same thing about D. Okay, so the instructor may also, so you are saying that given the grade, so this is what you are telling me and I am going to challenge this. The instructor may want to look at the SAT score, right? Oh, sorry, 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 whatever. Uh, so we assumed that the instructor relies only on the grade, right? That is the modeling assumption that we made. Once you make this assumption, this is what our belief of the student world is and once you have made this. It's not fair to ask me these what if questions, right? What if this had happened? What if that had happened? If you believe that this is not how an instructor writes a recommendation letter, you are free to change your assumptions, right? We want to assume that the instructor also looks at the SAT score, then just add this edge. Tell me that this is the model that you have. This will in turn tell me what are the kinds of conditional distributions that I want to learn, right? So now here, this table would actually be L given G comma S which is fine. As long as you tell me this is what you want, we will figure out a way of learning those parameters. But once you tell me that L does not depend on S directly and then you ask me these what if questions, it does not work that way, right? So you have to make a modeling assumption, you are free to make whatever modeling assumptions you want to make. Once you make that, you freeze the network and then do the analysis on top of that, right? And why just SAT score, right? I mean you could have also tell me that it depends on the instructor may also consult one of his colleagues, right? He, the instructor might feel that, okay, this person has done a project with that colleague and I trust this colleague, so let me ask that colleague's opinion. And it doesn't end anyway, right? You could just introduce as many random variables as you want, right? What if the instructor was in a bad mood? So, it will also add a random variable for mood, right? And so, these kind of things will just go on. So, you have to make some kind of assumptions, live with those assumptions and do all the assumptions, all the analysis within that set of assumptions, right? So, the graph is just a repl reflection of what you decided how the world works and once you have done that, you are going to freeze it and not make any changes and not ask these what if questions. I am just discouraging you from asking me any questions. Right? Do not ask me these what if questions. But I mean jokes apart, this is what you mean by that, right? So if you believe that A is how the model works or the world works, then L is independent of S given G. If you believe that B is how the world works, then L is not independent of S given G, right? That is straightforward, okay? And for now, we will just stick to graph A, that is more convenient. So, we will just assume that the grade completely determines the recommendation later. Okay. 